Today I'm going to show you step by step how I terraform in Minecraft, following three basic rules. Let's do this. I know what you guys are thinking, rules, what rules right? Well, let's start with the basics. Rule number one, always double layer your terrain. I'm sure we've all fallen a victim to this one, you know what I mean. You've been out, you've got a bunch of loot, you've got a ton of diamonds, you're running home, heading back to base so that you can put them in your chest, and then it happens. You fall straight through that hole, you know, that enderman, he just had to take that one block. And you're down that hole, and who do you see? A pile of creepers. We all know the outcome. So, always double layer your terrain. Rule number two, never place more than seven blocks in a straight line when curving terrain. When you place more than seven, it starts to look unnatural. It looks much better when you break it down into small segments and creates a much smoother transition on the terrain in general. Rule number three, and I cannot stress this one enough, is work with the terrain. Now, Minecraft already has an amazing terrain generation. Yeah, it's a bit blocky and sometimes a little bit misshaped, but we have a great base to work with. So when you're building and you're building houses or villages, take a really good look at the terrain. Look at the shape, look at the hills, you know, and think about how you can add to the terrain or take away from it to really make it look nice. It's easy to carve out an edge into a mountain and turn that mountain into a cliff face. You know, it's easy to have a kind of a big sort of square looking mountain and smooth it all out and make it look into a nice smooth hill that you can work a bunch of houses and some fields into, you know, so try to use your eye and really work with the terrain, you know, don't work against it and don't try to just, you know, not plan into it. Think about how you can really generate your village into the landscape. Okay, we're going to start by smoothing out the terrain. So we're going to do this in a bit of a time lapse, but let me talk about my thought process and the exact process I follow when doing this. So first of all, we heavily focus on rule number two, which is no more than seven blocks in a row, working with odd numbers with the exception of two blocks. We're going to start at the base and we work our way up so that we can create a nice smooth slope into the hills. At the bottom here you can see that we do an outline before we do anything else. This allows me to have a nice smooth curve that I'm happy with and then once I'm happy with the curve I will fill in the grass behind it. Doing this allows me to get a kind of idea of where I want my starting point and I can kind of picture behind at the back where I want the finishing point. Then we start to slope it up so we go to the next layer. The next layer we follow the same process, sticking to no more than 7 blocks, sticking with odd numbers with the exception of 2. At this point here it's important to remember that if you want the area to look organic you want to make sure that you do not follow the same curve as the level below or the level above. So what you want to do is stick to different numbers, bring the curve further back, you know, dip it in, create a bit more of a larger area. Some areas bring it closer to the curve. This allows the terrain to develop a bit more of a natural look and gives it more of a nice flow as you're going up or down the hill. You need to make sure that you do this on every layer so that no layers look the same. You also want to take note of the point where you stop for each section of your curves. Make sure that the layers above don't have like loads of spots that all line up in the same place. The reason why is if you keep them in the same place, you're going to just develop a kind of a very straight looking slope and it's going to just look off. You won't have a natural curve to it and it'll just start looking misplaced. So make sure that each layer has different sort of shapes so that you can create a better curve and a more natural flow to the terrain in general. Once you get to the, to the top of the area, you want to start making your slope a bit more smoother. If you can, you want to make sure that it generates smoothly into the top of the hill. So I start to leave a little bit wider gaps in places. The good thing about leaving these wider gaps in places on each level of the, of the terrain that you're working with is this opens up a good spot for building. I like, for instance, in these places to build maybe a small farm, you could have a little house and if you have a good little curve, you can actually fit your house in perfectly and have a smooth little curved off area for a garden. And this is what is I mean by working with terrain. So when you build slopes like this, you want to think ahead and think to yourself, 
right, if I'm building a house in this spot somewhere here, should I create a curve in a particular shape so that I can fit a garden or a path? So always try and keep into mind what you want to be building and whether it would work with the terrain that you're shaping. OK, it's a very it's a key point and it does take a bit of practice to kind of learn to understand it. But once you get it, it, it becomes very easy to do. Now that we've got all of our landscape in place and it's all smoothed out. Let's go ahead and get a pathway in place. Now, pathways will do one of two things when you're building. They will either make the build or break the build. In other words, they will either work with the build and make it look really nice or they will make it look very messy. Now, the best way to make it look good and work with the build is to do your pathway before you do the work. So before you place in any buildings or anything like that, have a good look at your terrain, figure out which directions you want your pathways to go. Now, I would suggest rather than planning out a ton of pathways all over the entire part of your build, concentrate on a small section. So I'm going to start with a small section and I'm going to say I want a little path that comes from the top here. I want it to come over this side here, down and round, down here, and then a little sort of walkway off the edge here down to the lowest level. Okay, so just one single pathway. That way, what we can do is get the pathway in and then we can work our builds around it, deciding which builds are going to go in which area around the pathway and whether they're going to fit in with the pathway and with the terrain. Let me show you a cool little trick that I found for doing pathways. I'm going to do this with grass path, but you can change this as you build it. But I think using grass path is a good way to give you a guide before you actually lay out your road. So. I want the pathway coming down, so let's start at the very top here. So I'm going to start with a single line, okay? So I want the pathway coming down from about here. So we'll do, let's say, five in a row. Now, again, we're going to work exactly with the same numbers that we do with the curving of the terrain. So let's go five there. We'll go three. Now we want to head over that way a bit there. So let's go two, one, one and we've got the slope going down so now we're gonna go one two three one two three four five one two three four five so now i think we're gonna go and do a curve so we'll start curving it around so let's go one two three one two one 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 two one two three Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now, I'm hoping that we can keep this in the right area, but we may have to extend it if we need to. So we go two. Then what we do is we're going to get a path block. We're going to put it there. That creates a similar shape. We go two. So we got two, one, two, one, two. And then we go three, one, maybe two. Yeah, that looks good. And then from here, we're going to work the way down. So we're going to go one, one two one two three now there's a good shape to that pathway i think that looks really good so once you're happy with the single pathway how do you turn this into say a three block wide or a five block wide because sometimes it becomes very difficult to get the corners and the turnings right but i found a easy way to do it is now that we've got that line and we're happy with that line let's go ahead and we can bring a line down this side then we're going to follow around so almost giving this a border so we're going to go around and just keep going around that edge to create a border now there you go we've got a really nice two wide pathway but we want to make it free so why not add a border around on the other side so we're going to break that and we're going to extend a border around this side now don't worry about any bits that look unlevel we can sort that out once we've got the pathway all in place okay that looks pretty good so what we're going to do is we're going to get our grass path and we're going to just extend on that area there now because it steps down over here we're going to actually change that we'll create a bit of a diagonal stretch there 
We'll replace these, like so. And we'll also go ahead and we'll probably put in one there to break some of this. And in fact, give it one more. So about that, I think. Now, because of this quite sort of high rise here, I think it's probably actually best if we just cut that back to somewhere probably about there. So let's go ahead, get rid of these ones. And again, we can go ahead and replace all of this section with the grass path. That looks better. It looks much smoother. So we can fit it in and we could go ahead. Let's narrow that one off just a tad. Yeah, that looks good. And now we've got quite a smooth pathway all the way down. And I think that is going to work perfect. Now, I'm going to just use a spruce slab here for the pathway. But like I said, this is just a marking. If you want to do a stone and or brick path, whatever, go ahead and you can replace all of this with the stone bricks. And then where I'm putting the spruce slabs, you can use the stone slabs or the stone brick slabs. So we're going to put in some stairs here. Then we're going to put one there, one there. We're going to go with one here and keep that as a bit more of a diagonal. We're going to just expand anywhere you feel. You just need a little expansion just to open up the pathway. Go ahead and do so. Next, we're going to go ahead and just add a few little walls to make this look a little bit more natural. So first of all, get your stone, your stone bricks, your andesite and find areas where you want to put in a wall. For instance, this area here looks a bit rough on the edge, so we want to cover this up. So first of all, we're just going to put some of our stone like this around the edge here. And we're going to continue it, I think, all the way until we get to about here. OK, because we want to get to that edge. Now, we will go ahead and change up some of the textures and stuff in a minute so that we can make this look a bit more natural. But I think something like this looks pretty good. And we use the slabs here to make the slope a little bit sort of less harsh, you know, rather than going up one block at a time, we kind of can smooth it out a little bit. Any areas we've got dirt underneath, go ahead and fill those in so that it looks like the wall goes down into the ground. Now we're going to go again to here and we'll put a slab here. Completely bring this all the way around. And then I guess we could go ahead, put in a bit of a wall just here. Yeah, perfect. Now I'm just going to put in a block there, slab here, maybe a slab down here. Just a couple of sort of slabs and blocks just to make it look a little bit more like it's kind of worn into the ground. But we've got to bear in mind at the moment it looks very clean. We're going to be texturing it to make it look a bit nicer in a minute. Now we're going to raise that one. We'll break that one, put a slab, raise this one, raise this one, maybe bring that one up a bit more. And then maybe a slab down there. As you can see, I think that looks pretty good. It works with the terrain and it kind of looks like it fits there. Now over here, we've got another bit, this big bit of terrain that kind of sticks in the way. So let's get some in here. But this side, because we're not on the outside of it, we're actually digging in. We want to dig in to create it. So we're going to go ahead and move blocks out of the way. Then I guess this bit here, we'll go ahead, we'll bring in about there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you here because we've got a wall here, we can make a feature on the terrain. So as you can see, I've got this section that sticks out here again. This was done with an intent. So here, if we go ahead and we start following the edge of the terrain. So like this, yeah, break this in, build it up. All the way around. Now, as you can see, this creates kind of area up here. This could be a garden or a house or something like that. So now let's go ahead and we fill in that area there. And look, there we go. We've got a nice sort of area here to work with, which is great. Let's go ahead and let's build up another wall. So again, we're just going to do these randomly, but we don't really want more than two in a row that are the same height. And just to make it look a little bit more natural, go ahead here and there, maybe throw in a sort of one or two little blocks just to make it feel like it's fitting in with the area. Now, as you can see, that is looking pretty good. Now, to neaten up the pathway here and to make it look a bit better, go ahead and put in a bit of cool stuff. 
Not too much, just a few specks of it here and there, more towards the edges than anything. You can leave some bits of grass as well, but I think just a few bits of cool dirt really helps add a bit of kind of texture um, and a little bit of life to the path. Makes it look like it's been used. Okay, now we've got our texture in place, you can see that really adds a lot of life to the wall. Now, if you want it to look rougher, you could go ahead and put some cobblestone in there if you want, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking. Now, the only problem here is when a lot of people build these kind of things, they kind of look at it and they think, yeah, that looks good, and they walk away. But we've got a wall here. We've got a plain wall with nothing else. Let's give it a bit of color, give it a bit of decoration. Let's really make it pop. So how do we do that? Leaves and flowers, just to add some little bushes. So let's use some spruce leaves. We could do something like this, make a few of them a little bit higher. Uh, you can even go ahead and make them look like some little trees underneath. So something like this. And I think that looks pretty good. Put in a few little flowers. You can put in some grass. Something like this. And then whenever you have your little gaps, go ahead, maybe put in a rose bush or so. Something like that. And look at the little effects you get from behind the wall. It just adds such a nice bit of color and really adds so much to the area. Now, as you can see, I've only done this in a small little section, but imagine a nice big garden coming all the way around here and following all of that. Having more gardens as you go up the hill with more versions of this, maybe using different leaves and different flowers to really create a form of atmosphere into the area. Okay, now this don't fully come under terrain, but this is one thing I just want to quickly cover, and that is how do you expand buildings into the terrain when you're building? So, for instance here, let's say we have a, a house that we want to build, and we want it to have a stone base. Let's say we decide, okay, we, right, I want a house to be about here. Okay, this is going to be the corner. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six to make that seven blocks long. I go one, two, three, four, five, six to make it seven blocks this way. We'll add a little pop out of the side here. Five blocks in the middle. Then we're going to bring it back this way. And then we're going to get rid of that for the moment. And we'll bring this one all the way down. And then when we're in line with that wall, we'll just add one little bit that kind of pops out of the front here. So if we imagine this would be in the front of the build on this level, we could bring the stone across here. We want to just put the stone in the ground there so that we can see it underneath. And then we'll just bring it around and join it up to here. Now, because this is the higher point that we want the stone to sort of start from, we could go ahead and say, right, so this is going to be the stone platform. We could texture this later on. That doesn't matter. We can texture all that up. But let's go ahead and bring this all the way around. And this is the foundation for the house. It overhangs everywhere. We've got this big gap. So just go ahead and fill it in. Just fill it into the ground. Move any blocks that are underneath out the way and make sure that your stone touches the bottom block so that it looks like it is flush and like it was meant to be. Now, when you build your house and say, for instance, you put your floor in at this height, then once you've got your floor in place, if you decided that you was going to build, say, some pillars, you just go ahead, remove your corners, bring your pillars up to wherever you plan on bringing them. Same like this. And then, of course, you just go ahead and you'd fill your walls in with whichever block you want to plan to do with your walls. Now, we spoke a lot about the main terrain, but what about things like rivers? How can we improve the look of rivers? I mean, come on, this has got a bunch of clay, sand, dirt, gravel, everything here. This just looks kind of a bit of a mess, really. How can we improve this? So, first of all, in your water, go ahead, dig out any of these little random areas you got sticking up in the way. You Ideally, in a river, you want to be able to dig out a little canal, and you want it to be fairly deep. Deeper it kind of looks generally, the nicer it tends to look. Because it looks darker and just feels a little bit more natural rather than being so shallow. Because most rivers like this would still be sort of, you know, deep enough that they would dip down. They wouldn't be too close to the surface. Once you've done that, go ahead and you can change up a few things. Change your sand, your gravel, your clay. Change it for some cool stir or some normal dirt. You know, just keep it all out of the way. Let's go ahead and change this up and just get a look because I think most rivers that you look in, it tends to look mostly like dirt at the bottom. See, coarse dirt looks good, 
But adding in just a few of the granite blocks just adds a nice little break in between all of the textures. As you can see, that slight change just makes such a difference. Go ahead, use the mossy cobblestone slab and just add a few of them in to just make them look like little kind of rock formations. If you get any to do this, just go ahead, plop a water bucket on it and you're good to go. Once you've done that, throw down a little bit of bone meal and there we go. It just makes a huge difference. Now, another thing to do is on the edges of the water. So on these edges here, I mean, come on, we're not going to get grass, you know, grow like this realistically. It's going to be dirty and a bit muddy. So let's go ahead and let's swap some of it out for a bit of cool stir. Now, while we're swapping it out for cool stir, we want to start by doing the edges and then just bring it back a little bit further and then just start fading it out by placing a few random blocks here and there. Now, I would suggest that you leave a few sort of blocks of grass. So let me just put in maybe one here, one here, because we're going to go ahead and just turn them into grass path. Because it kind of looks like a bit of a mud spot across the edge of the water. Now, once we've done that, we could go ahead, maybe put in a few of the spruce fences. And then we're just going to go ahead, add a few of the spruce leaves. You can do any leaves. It hasn't got to be the spruce ones. Something kind of like that around the edges. And then just go ahead and just add a few little bits of foliage to just kind of liven it up. Maybe a couple of flowers. There we go. And that looks great. Now, don't get me wrong. You can throw down many more flowers and different colors if you want. This just gives you something of a nicer edge across the edge of your waters, you know. These waters, the, the, the rivers rather, they can look, you know, quite plain and boring. Now, the wall that we created up here, we can also go ahead and do the same on the edge of the water as well. So, as you can see, we've got this higher edge here. So, why don't we turn this, for instance, into a wall, exactly the same as the one over there. Now, with the wall all in place, you can see that really finishes off the edge of the river here. You know, it just gives that nice little finish to that area that just needed a little something. One thing I love doing in areas like this is creating little farms. And the area over here is perfect for a style of farm that I really enjoy doing. So, first of all, let's go ahead and create a wall across each of these levels heading up here. So, we're going to do a level down here. And this one here, we're going to just blend straight into the wall. And then finally, we're going to do one just at the top here. To make this side look a little bit different, I've gone ahead and I've put the fences on top of the stone bricks. And I've gone ahead and just made a little three block gap with some slabs down the bottom here to make a little walkway. that We can come down to each farm level. So if we imagine from the path, let's imagine we've got a nice little pathway that comes around the edge here. Joins up to here. We can allow ourselves to kind of come in about here and we can do something into this one as well and what i like to do with these farms just because these are only going to be a stair just for looks let's just create a little rough looking bit of a path you know just randomly where somebody might have walked and we'll do the same again over this side and on this level here we'll do the same sort of thing then of course we're going to need to add some water sources in here so i'm going to go ahead just randomly here and there and place a few little water sources add some slabs and till the soil and finally add some crops to the tilled soil and there we go we've got our custom built farms into the terrain of our village and it really adds a great little feature now, if you'd like to see a follow-up video with some more terraforming tips, please be sure to let me know in the comments, and I will catch you in the next one.